Now, as you can see, that there is a lot of correlation of the reaction that we are studying with previous reactions, and the same trend will keep on being true till the completion of the course. So, the chapters here are not independent of each other. Whatever you studied in hydrocarbon, that's going to appear up again in carbonyl compounds, alcohols, that's going to appear again in amines and carboxylic acids. So it's the whole of one thing. It's if for, for convenience, they, they, they teach you or I'm, I'm teaching you chapter wise, but the whole thing is just one concept. So what you have to do is you have to be very well versed with all the reactions that you have studied up till now. So correlating with all those reactions, the upcoming reactions will seem very easy. If you don't know those reactions, then what I am, whatever I'm saying, if I have taught you before, I'll take a jump. And that jump can be very painful to you if you don't know the reaction that we have studied before. So what you have to do is you have to know all the reaction that has been taught up till now. You have to know all the reactions of the chapter hydrocarbon. So if you're if hovering over internet, if you have come to listen this lecture, then that is not a good idea. Either you go and listen the lectures of hydrocarbon or somehow you must be knowing the chapter hydrocarbon. Then continue listening. Otherwise, unnecessarily things will seem difficult when it is not. Now, conversion problem. Suppose I have A on A. I added H plus H2O and HgSO4. Now, this is giving me acetophenone. I can get acetophenone from B if I add CH3 MgX followed by hydrolysis. Now, on B, if I add SNCl2, HCl, and then I add H plus H2O, I would get C. On C, if I add magnesium, and then I add H plus H2O, I would get, suppose I will get E because I'll get acetophenone from D if I add acetyl chloride and LCL3. So D will give me acetophenone on A, suppose if I add sodium first and then I add methyl iodide. I'm going to get F. From F, if I add diborane in basic medium and hydrogen peroxide, if I get G and if I add simple H plus H2O and Hg plus 2 ion, I'll get H. Then identify A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. Now these reactions are recent reactions. The reaction that I have taught you in alkenes and aldehydes. Most of the reactions, all the reactions are indeed from carbonyl compound chapter. I haven't taken reactions from hydrocarbon or any other chapter. So it won't be difficult for you. You don't have to revise much reactions. You just have to start from the beginning of this chapter, carbonyl compound. The reactions that are there, you just have to revise those reactions to solve this conversion problem. And I hope you have been doing that. And it shouldn't be difficult for you to solve this conversion problem. So you do it. You, you get your answers. You write A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Write the corresponding compounds corresponding to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And then check your answers. And then feel happy and confident and giddy and blissful that you're learning organic chemistry. And then uh, uh, match your answer before listening any further. I, I urge you to solve this conversion problem on your own. 
Now, the, obviously, we'll start from A. To solve this problem, this, to solve this conversion, you'll start from A. Because acetophenone has been given, so the conversion is pretty easy. Not much to think about. This H plus H2O HgSO4 is the recent reaction that we have studied. Uh, and um, this is simply hydration. This is hydration. It can be used for alkene or alkynes. But generally, HgSO4 is used for hydration of alkyne. And acetophenone is a ketone. So it can't be alkene because alkenes hydration give you alcohol. This ketone comes from hydration of alkyne. This you know. So A got to be an alkyne. Which alkyne? That alkyne you would know if you know the structure of acetophenone. Acetophenone is this. So whatever this ring is, that ring has to be in A as well because there is no reaction on this ring. And if it's an alkyne, at least two carbon is required for carbon-carbon triple bond. Now the two carbon outside of the ring, those two carbon must be utilized in making a carbon-carbon triple bond. So A would be A should be this a benzyl ring and uh, a triple bond outside that ring that will result in acetophenone. Now B B is the reaction that we have studied recently. This reaction is uh, a reaction for preparation of ketone from Grignard reagent. So in, the, in the, this reaction, you know that B has to be a cyanide. You have to know this reaction. I told you this is an important reaction. This reaction, Grignard reagent, when reacts with cyanide, with subsequent hydration, gives us a ketone. Now, the ketone ha is acetophenone, you know, and that acetophenone, this, there's a phenyl ring. So in B, there has to be a phenyl ring that has to be intact. And outside the phenyl ring, there has to be a cyanide. So this is what B should be. There's one carbon and one carbon will come from Grignard reagent, the CS3. Then there will be two carbons and there will be a double bond on one of the carbon. So that will result in acetophenone. B is acetophenone. Simple. C. Now from B, you are getting C and you have to, looking at the reagent, you have to know what the reaction is B is a cyanide and SNCl2 HCl is a reducing agent. Cyanide is being reduced. So one of the pi bond of cyanide will be reduced on subsequent hydration. So there will be C double bond N. So when you hydrolyze this, this will result in an aldehyde. And the name of the reaction is the Stephens reaction. Stephens reaction is the reaction that we studied for method of preparation of aldehyde, perhaps the fourth reaction that I taught you. So this is Stefan's reaction and I hope you have been learning the reaction of this chapter so it won't be difficult for you to recall that this is Stefan's reaction and knowing the reaction's name, looking at the reagent you must be knowing, you must know what the reaction is. Once you know that what the reaction is, you must know what the reagent of that reaction is and what the product of that reaction is, what the reactant of that reaction is. So Stefan's reaction C is the aldehyde, the final product of a Stefan's reaction is the aldehyde. So I mean, the phenyl ring will remain intact. There's nothing going to happen in this aromatic ring. So whatever is going to happen, that's going to happen outside. There will be no increment in the carbon from B to C because there is no carbon being added. So B has one carbon outside the ring. So will C have. So, so C will also have one carbon. And this nitrogen will go out as ammonia gas. And this will result you in a aldehyde. See? C is done. Let's come to E.